we have a lot of uh, uses for exponential functions. There's a lot of applications for these types of functions. We're going to focus on this example dealing with investments. Now, you may remember that there are a lot of ways for you to talk about interest and that sort of thing. We have two formulas that we focus on in this particular example for um, compounding interest. The first formula that you see here, it's a kind of a long formula, has to do with compounding over periods during a year. So for example, if I compound daily, quarterly, monthly, um, yearly, those are all ideas for compounding during the year and you can see the formula here. Another way to talk about compounding interest has to do with this formula that I kind of call PERT because it looks like that's what it's spelled like. And it's if I cont compound continuously. These are the two formulas that we're going to use in this example and I'm going to go through what each of these variables represent as we identify them in the problem. So it says, suppose that you have $6,000 to invest. This is the principal investment, and it is represented by the letter P. So P would be equal to $6,000. It says, which investment yields the greater return over four years? This is represented by T, which is time. Time is always given in years, so we have four years. And we have two separate interest rates. We have an interest rate over here for compounding quarterly. Okay, so this rate, which is written as a decimal of 0 0.0825, and when it says that it's compounding quarterly, that is the compounding during the year, which is represented by the letter N. So if I compound it quarterly during the year, that means I compound it four times during the year. So this idea over here is going to be compounding using this uh, formula here for compounding during the year. So this is A is equal to P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N T. And what we're going to find out is this is going to be the amount of my investment after all of this takes place. So this is the final dollar amount, including the interest that I earn on it. The second way we're going to do this, it says, uh, what happens if I do all of that and I compound it continuously? When I compound continuously, that word, compound continuously, identifies the fact that I'm going to use the formula, the PERT formula, <coughs> the PERT formula, P E to the R T. For this formula, what I need, again, would be the principal investment of $6,000. I have an interest rate of 8.3%, so R is equal to 0 .083, and I am still investing it over four years. So T is four years. Those are the two pieces of information because I'm going to basically be solving this twice. I'm going to write it down, even though this is a calculator problem, I'm going to write it down so I can make sure that I get it into my calculator correctly. So I know that I'm looking for the final dollar amount when I have $6,000 invested at 1 plus R is 0 0.0825 divided by N for the quarterly amount, raised to the four for the quarterly, you know, compounding over four years, so four times four in that case. The second way that I'm going to do this says that that dollar amount, that initial investment of $6,000 being multiplied by E raised to the interest rate of 0.083 times four years. Now let's go do both of those in the calculator. So I'm going to pull my calculator up and I think I'm going to move it over here. Maybe not. Okay, I think I've got the calculator so that you can see it. Depending on what model of calculator you're using will depend on how you enter this into the calculator, but I want to show you how I can do it in, in this version of it. 
I'm just going to enter it exactly as it is here um, in the formula. I have 6,000 and I'm going to multiply that times 1 plus this fraction, this fraction right here. So I'm going to surround that interior fraction by parentheses, so this is 0 0.0825 uh, divided by 4. Close the parentheses for that fraction. Close the parentheses for the 1. So that was this right here. Pull it back up. Now I'm going to raise it to the 16th power because I can multiply 4 times 4 in my head. So I'm going to multiply, raise this to the 16th power. And I get um, a value of $8,317.84 if I were to compound quarterly at the given interest rate. Now let's compare that to the PERT formula. So for the PERT formula, and let me move that over here and bring my calculator back up. PERT formula says I have $6,000 that I am going to multiply times E. Now E is here above the division key, so I'm going to hit second. I can either do it above the division key or I can do it above the log key. I think I'm going to do it above the log key because it gave me the exponent position already. So I have e raised to the. Now up here in the exponent position, I'm going to multiply it times 0 0.083, or I'm going to raise it to 0 0.083 times the four years, times the four years. Uh, I'm going to arrow out of that position, and I'm maybe and then I'm going to close my parentheses, hit enter, and you can see that if I were to invest that $6,000 compounding continuously, I get a dollar amount of $8,362.52. Uh, so there's a difference of roughly, what, $50 between the two. The interest rates weren't exactly the same, but it had to do with compounding it differently. So that is how to answer this question. Obviously, it's a calculator question. It just depends on, um, you just want to make sure that you can get it entered into your calculator correctly.